Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it is American military navy, I think, frequency meter FR5 U. It is, of course, completely tube based. And uh, this Mega Maunum monster, as you can imagine, it, it weighs 33 kilos. I've been trying to Google a little bit to see if I am able to find anything relevant, uh, but I did find a web page selling a unit exactly like this one. Uh, I think they want uh, 179 euros and they don't even know if it works or not. But I must give them uh, the cosmetic condition of their unit is a lot more beautiful. Mine is a little bit dirty and all that kind of stuff. So it's a frequency meter and we got three different bands. As far as I can see, we got um, from 10 to 100 megahertz in three bands. And uh, here we go with the adjustments. So that will be the three different frequency bands. See the indication here. I don't know if you can see the numbers, but I would expect a, a lamp would light up in between these three holes here, right? Uh, depending on the range. So you know where to look. I think it's quite obvious. And then we have a harmonic readout as well. And the funny thing is that the harmonic readout isn't really uh, directly... Um, let me see if I can get a picture here of that. That is impossible. Why isn't it? I was hoping to get this into focus, but that is just not going to happen today. So the idea is the readout here, the harmonic is not a multiple directly of the bass frequency. So I don't understand exactly why that is happening. But I think this is, is because the different mixers and multipliers this unit uh, consists of is uh, probably to blame for that little thing. So the RF input is, of course, mixed down. So this is, of course, a local oscillator mixer and all that kind of stuff. And then there's a fine adjustment here. We can't really see anything in here because there's no light in there. The idea is something is moving in here and it's full of optics. So I think there's a something very tiny that is rotating down here. And this is, yeah, well... Because I don't know the state of this unit, I will have to open and expect before I can power it up. But you, I just wanted to show you first with the entire case on it. <laughs> it's just so massive. And the, this little holder here is also really... Yeah, it's made to handle the massive weight of this unit. Oh, and we got calibration tables. Isn't that nice? So you push here and then you can open. What? We got the ink. We got everything here. We got a whole book. Oh, my goodness. Numbers and numbers and numbers of goody goody numbers. Operating instructions and everything. I want to read this and see if I can figure out. Aha, uh -huh, here it says a lot of cool things. Basic frequency, harmonic number, e input. Aha, uh -huh, so there's some. Maybe I can also figure out how old this unit is. Hang on, I will, I will go into investigation mode. I finally managed to get this out of it's casing and I will now go through how I 
believe this one works. So there is a check feature where you can go into fine or check. So with check, it will take its oscillator and there is a high accuracy crystal oscillator here. And the output from the oven uh, crystal oscillator is also here on the front. So you can take these three point, what is that? Is it a six or is it a five? It's difficult to see, right? I believe it's 3.6 megahertz. So the output from the crystal, of course, goes here, but it also goes via all this. And I believe we got some doublers and stuff like that here. And then they mix all this together. So we have a lot of harmonics. And this is the whole idea. You want harmonics um, yeah, all the way. So you can beat. And this way you can see where you are at. See, that is uh, interesting. So the output here goes in to the next stage. And this is uh, also a little amplifier and mixer. And then the output goes to to the I believe this is one of the oscillators we got two oscillators in this unit so there's a fine oscillator and then there's a another one that covers a very wide range and we've got different tappings or different um, uh, variable capacitors here and that's of course because the, it changes a uh, behavior due to uh, the three bands depending on what band you select it uses more or less of these and then it goes into different uh, yeah oscillator parts of course right and again we got quite a lot of tubes to do all that oscillator here and here is the big fantastic oscillator uh, there's only one tube here, and I believe there's also another tube in here. We've got some more tubes down there, and I will flip it so I can show you that oscillator here. And here, if I crank around the frequency here, you see there's nothing that moves up here. And that is because the fine tuning is done here, right? We've got a lot of gearboxes. I look so much forward to show you a closer up of what is going on. And it looks like this one is not moving, but I'll try and hold the camera here. Okay, now look careful. Can you see? Yes, you can see it now, right? So it is moving. Oh, maybe I should go the other way. I don't know. This is real difficult to show. But believe me, there is a ratio of a huge factor between that wheel and that wheel. <laughs> I don't know. How the heck did they do that? We can maybe look in here. Yeah, we got a spore gear. And we got a we got some different gearboxes in there, right? What is going on here? I don't know. Yeah, we got the different gearboxes here. And then, okay, this is a, this is the level. So the um, it beats the frequency down to a tone. And that tone goes in your headphones. So there's a connector for headphones. And then you can adjust the level here. And then there's a fine check. And there's a tiny little capacitor here that is affected by this as well. Yeah, we can probably look at the oscillator here, but I want some more light. Let's see if I can I can do that in one take. So this is the big nasty oscillator that will that will handle the three big ranges. Remember, we got. Uh, 10 to 21, 21 to 46, and 46 to 100. And then we just crank this one here. And see, we got different 
shielded cables, coax cables, that of course goes to the next stage mixer and all that kind of stuff. And this is this explains why the harmonic isn't a direct multiplum of the set frequency because we are mixing between um, several different oscillators. And I believe uh, all those uh, connectors here, there's of course a little bit of interconnect and also uh, power supply. Uh, we got some spare fuses here on the back. As you can see, they are not connected and we got the text spare written on them. So that is uh, quite nice. So they obviously expect the fuses to blow. This uh, snot you see here is because this type of plastic here has dissolved. So if you touch this, you will get some sticky slime on your fingers. So that drips probably down in the connector, but also down here. So this is really what I want to avoid touching. And this is the left side of the unit, as you can see here. That will be the power supply. And that is of course also completely tube based. I believe I counted 27 tubes so far. I did my very best. There's only one little question if there is another little tube in one of the boxes. And all of them got uh, the military number suffix type, the J-A-N. So that is pretty good. Oh, there's one more thing you really want to see. This is the rear of the unit. And look. This is what you're looking through, um, the front panel optics. So there's a whole reel of film. Yes, this is a 35 millimeter film with all the harmonics and frequencies and all that kind of stuff listed. So when you dial around the fine tuning, all this is uh, moving. So there's a little film projector in this unit full of wheels and stuff. And funky goodies, look at all that! Isn't that just amazing? Ha! Well, I really hope there's a nice shiny bulb in there and then we can get a picture on the little screen. That, I, I believe that is what's going on here, right? Yes, and that is... That will be the spare fuses. And up here, we got some more funny things. Those two cans I believe they also consist of probably some spare parts or something. Let's have a look. Up here, I did find those two boxes. Master film for reproduction only. Wow. And then there is a spare film. So this is a copy of that one. I think this is really weird to find stuff like this inside a unit. So this is the spare film. I don't dare to let go of this because then it's going to go all over the place and I'm never going to put it in the box again. But isn't that just cool? <laughs> so here's the spare film. But as long as the original film here is working, we don't need to change it. But isn't that just amazing? I'll put it in here. Cool. I should try and take some nice scans or sharp photos of the instruction manual and put into the video here so you can see how they explain how to use this instrument. But I was right about how to to use it about the beats and uh, the harmonics and all that kind of stuff. And that is all there is to say about the manual, really, the instruction manual. The rest, that will be all the harmonics. And the reason for them to have all these many, many frequency harmonics here, and that is because uh, it's it's not a multiplum because of the different uh, oscillators they're using. 
<laughs> this is so crazy. Look at that. How the harmonics they interpolate with the with the settings in the different frequency settings. And this just goes on and on and on for a gazillion pages. All the way to many, many hundreds of megahertz, if I'm not wrong. So that was 200. Yeah, I think it's uh, <laughs> fascinating. So I think I will try and power this up and see if it takes the fuses or whatever it's doing. I have uh, prepared a little bit with a signal generator for 15 megahertz, a scope for the oscillator output, and uh, then we're going to see what happens, right? I adjusted the, the course for 15 megahertz, and uh, I think I am in... Yeah, I, I mean, it should work, right? So I will crank on power here, and chassis is uh, grounded, because the mains connector here is, of course, not grounded. So I should be able to turn this on. And then slowly crank up. This is perfectly normal. All this. Let's go to 220. And then let's see what is going on. We got quite a lot of nice light this is way too powerful are you kidding me but here there's this beautiful light and you can see all the little numbers down there if you are not too let me see if i can yeah here so th this is the numbers yeah that will be the numbers from the film that we are looking at here right and this, of course, explains why we couldn't see anything at all. So, why don't we see any... Okay, probably because of that. So that is the output from the oscillator. So, we got a... Oh my god. That frequency is not stable, but that is how it's, I think this is how it's supposed to be full of all the nasty harmonics. So that is the whole idea. And uh, that is why we will be able to hear all the beats. Right. But the oscillator output here, is that really supposed to look like that? Hmm. Could of course try and uh, snip into the signal from the oscillator. There's another signal that goes into the next amplifier or the harmonics generator or whatever it is. I really can't find any schematics or anything for this unit. So I just have to guess a little bit. And in check, we should of course align the system to the correct frequencies. So I don't know if you can hear, there's a very low tone. So this is how you do it with the check. You go for the zero beat and then you, there's a little, well, let me crank down the level here so you don't hear this. Let's see if I can, if I can focus in here. See, here's a little marker. This marker is the important. That is the important marker. So if you go too high, see, it points up, and that is the marker. And then you go the other way, and then there's another indicator. Oh, you need to go that way. So I kind of like what they have done here. And then check you adjust the screen for this marker right and then the idea is 
you crank this to zero beat and then you're happy with the alignment and then everything goes correctly <laughs> so it really really works isn't that amazing so power consumption is at the moment about 105 watts uh, between uh, it goes up and down depending on the the frequency ranges and all that kind of stuff i don't know if this is easy to see but there's a lamp here that shows the oven heater so this is what they want to show you so the oven heater goes on and off with uh, i don't know 20 seconds intervals and then the uh, power consumption goes uh, up and down about 10 15 watts so that means there is a temperature sensor inside the oven oscillator and when the oven is too cold it will turn on the heater and so on so it's at a nice hot temperature in here um, all the different modules they should be really really easy to take out we got some really big hefty screws i will probably show you so here we go that will be the screws the big black screws here we got a few of these and i believe that is all you have to do to get into the module here then everything just comes out and then there's just a plug here they also made it so see this cable is mounted here where you can't really release it and then this cable go here with a bnc connector and then the other cable from that unit is also mounted in that end with a bnc connector to this one so this means it's really difficult to connect anything wrong and this also means that somebody could in the field because this is uh, military and navy kind of product so that means somebody without deep technical skills could easily just remove a module put in another module and then it's back um, operating and then you can align radio receivers and transmitters using this uh, unit so oh no i told myself not to touch these <laughs> they are so so nasty slimy really funny special connectors here so the crystal oscillator and heater was super easy just to pull out since it is in a nice socket like that here in this uh, socket module here and uh, it's of course isolated i really don't want to touch this because this looks like glass wool or something like that so this is really nasty to touch so now i need to figure out how to put it back together without touching it but anyway here is the heater module and i believe there is a temperature switch in here where you can adjust those two screws to set the desired uh, temperature and that will be the heater element that is uh, wound around everything and what you see here is the bottom part of uh, a crystal socket so in here there is a normal crystal all you have to do is probably just loosen those two screws and then we can have a look at the crystal yes exactly beautiful design good thermal stable way to do this so all this is probably aluminium and that will be the crystal really i kind of like this uh design yes and that is the entire oscillator it is of course beautiful made and we got a lot of internal adjustments well two of them and that will be the different filter or harmonic amplifier generators so it will be able to be mixed into the mixing system but look at that super easy inside a box like that four screws and then you can just change the model module including the lamp so they really tried to do this field replaceable so i think that will be the last few modules that i dare to take out because those are 
easy to take out and uh, service and replace again. So that will be the power supply. There's a very big, hefty transformer. And look at that. So they put it into a big layer of epoxy. So that is quite good. And there will, of course, be inductors for filter, um, filter components for the high voltages. We've got some voltage regulator tubes as well. And that will be the amplifier for the oscillator. But anyway, that was uh, more or less all I wanted to show you. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you soon again. Bye-bye. I had the idea I was done with this video, but look what I found in the back of the manual because I was going to scan some of the stuff in the manual. I also find a attached note about how to change an FR5 to an A. So we got those five upgrades that needs to be done. And then I got the entire schematic and it is quite a lot of pages so I will see if I can scan this somehow and uh, I should probably put a link in the description so you can find this yeah I think I will do that see that's the heater for the crystal and um, yes, see there is a mechanical switch that turn on and off the heater. And then here is our tuned face inverter. So yes, see, harmonic generator, frequency divider, 2D frequency divider. I think we can learn a lot from uh, from the schematics, and that will be the power supply, the rectifiers, voltage regulators, and then what have we got here? Interpolation oscillator, audio oscillator. To make the tone. Wow, man, this is really nice. Balanced modulator. Let's see what else we can learn from this. So we got the RF tuner trim for that. Detector. Bandpass amplifier. We've got a few of these depending on the different bands, right? Yes, exactly. This is what it says. That will be the different uh, band settings. Well, what else have we got? So that is the audio amplifier. Drive the phones. So yeah, definitely we are very close to what I already talked about with the different uh, tuner. And see, here is this uh, oscillator here that is connected to, okay, yeah, to all those capacitors in the and pass filters as well, right? Very interesting. Oi, look at that. There's a watermark. 1957. And I estimated 1960. There's a watermark. I don't know if we can... How is that possible to read? But I can see this. There's something written here in a watermark. How nice. 
Let me get some light. Let me show you. See, I found a flashlight. <laughs> Watermark schematics. How about that? Let me see. I'm here now at the back. I don't know if I overdrive the, the camera, whatever I do. But I, this is really visible for my eyes. But yes, we got watermarks here. And it says something about the name of the company and blah, 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 blah. I don't know whatever it says. But the fun thing is that definitely this is 1957 in a watermark. Oh, how the heck? That is, that is not visible from the front. Wow. Have we got any other what? Yes! The whole schematic is full of watermarks. Okay, it re it repeats. Yes, it is all over the... All over the schematic. All rights reserved or something like that. No, whatever that is broad. I will try and see if I can... Uh, if I can photo this. I've, I think I can't, can't really remember. I have seen anything like this before. How cool!